This is video two in our three or maybe four part series on learning. In this video we're going to focus on operant conditioning. Operant conditioning is a type of associative learning that was first studied and documented in detail by B.F. Skinner. In operant conditioning we're going to see some stark contrast between uh, what we do in operant conditioning to that what we saw in classical conditioning. We're going to talk about the law of effect. We're going to define reinforcers and punishers. We're going to define types of reinforcers and punishers. We're going to talk about schedules of reinforcement and the timing of reinforcement and punishment. We're also going to talk about the concepts of shaping and chaining uh, as they employ the uh, techniques of operant conditioning in real world settings. We'll start with the law of effect, sometimes referred to as Thorndike's law of effect. Now, the law of effect is one of those psychology concepts that is a little hard to understand at first and uh, kind of deep and tricky and you know, not a lot of people can understand it. I'm just kidding. And in fact, the law of effect is something that we all inherently know. And the law of effect says this. Behaviors that are reinforced, are reinforced will increase in likelihood. And behaviors that are punished will decrease in likelihood. No duh, right? It's something we all inherently know. But we give it a name that's called the law of effect. And it's this law of effect that kind of governs all the, um, the processes within operant conditioning. The behavior happens. It results in some consequence that either increases the likelihood of that behavior happening more, in that case the consequence would be a reinforcer, or the consequence occurs that may decrease the likelihood that that behavior would happen again and therefore that consequence is a punisher. So let's look at reinforcers versus punishers. Something is a reinforcer if it tends to increase the likelihood of the behavior that it follows. Something is a punisher if it tends to decrease the likelihood of the behavior it follows. Now there's a subtle thing here that you need to pay attention to. These two terms, reinforce and punisher, are defined by their effect, not by their intent. In other words, you could be trying to, re to punish a behavior, but in fact be reinforcing it. It doesn't matter what you intend to do, it matters what the, co what the effect of that action is. So let's say that you yell at someone for misbehaving, and uh, yet they keep misbehaving. While you may be intending to punish them, the effect of the yelling at them is actually reinforcing the behavior if the behavior increases in likelihood. Maybe what you're doing is giving them attention and therefore it's reinforcing. Let's talk about primary versus secondary reinforcers briefly because we're going to use these down the road. A primary reinforcer is a reinforcer whose value is inherently understood. You don't need to teach it something that you can uh, deliver or give or take away uh, that whose value, which value is understood. Can you think of an example of a primary reinforcer? That's right, food. Food is a primary reinforcer. It has value. A secondary reinforcer is something whose value has to be learned. We have to learn that that something is reinforcing. Uh, can you think of a secondary reinforcer? How about money? money is just paper or cloth with printing on it. The only reason it has value is because you've learned it ha that you can use it to purchase the things you really want, the primary reinforcers which you really want. So things like tokens uh, or money can be used as secondary reinforcers uh, that whose value is learned. So now that we've uh, defined the difference between reinforcers and punishers, which may seem obvious at first, let's look at types of reinforcement positive reinforcement versus negative reinforcement. Now this concept is probably the most misunderstood concept uh, in this unit and you'll see in um, you know on TV and in everyday language these terms used wrong all the time especially negative reinforcement whoops that's not what I meant to do. Uh, negative reinforcement is often uh, a misused term so we're gonna make sure we get these defined well. So a positive reinforcement the first thing you have to do when you evaluate these terms is ignore the first part ignore, uh, and in fact I'm just going to black it out for a second, ignore, let me get this pen, ignore the first word. Okay. Just think about the reinforcement part. Reinforcement is when something is given that's going to increase the likelihood of the behavior. Period. End of story. Doesn't matter if it's positive or negative. A reinforcer is reinforcing. The positive and negative has to do with whether something is given or taken away. So a positive reinforcement 
is when something desirable is given after a behavior is performed. Let's say you study really hard and therefore you get to go out for ice cream. The ice cream is the consequence for the behavior and it should increase the likelihood of that behavior and it's given. So we're given something we want, a reward, a reinforcement. Well, there's other ways to reinforce behavior. What if something you don't want is taken away? Negative reinforcement is the removal of something you didn't want anyway. So let's say, again, you study well, and as a result, you don't have to take out the trash for a week. You get less chores to do. Well, you were, weren't given anything. In fact, you were something was taken away. But in taking that away, it probably reinforced the behavior. Most people will misuse this term uh, because of this one reason. Hold on one second. I just needed to change pins there. The key to understanding positive versus negative reinforcement is to ignore positive and negative. First think about reinforcement and then think if something was given or taken away. Positive in this case does not equal good and negative does not equal bad. You need to think positive is an addition of something and negative is the subtraction of something. Let me give you two more examples. Let's say that you're in the grocery store uh, with your child and the child is maybe making a scene and throwing a fit and misbehaving and you're embarrassed and you want them to stop so you give them a lollipop and then the kid stops misbehaving now would you consider that positive or negative reinforcement well let's think about what happens the next time you go to the grocery store the kid starts throwing a fit again and you give him a lollipop and the next time you go to the grocery store he throws a fit and you give him a lollipop and each time you stop the behavior that you want which is the throwing of the fit but are you reinforcing that behavior by giving them lollipop? In fact, you are. It's positive reinforcement. The behavior is encouraged because every time it happens, it's rewarded. Now, some people will call that negative reinforcement because the outcome is a negative thing, a bad thing. It's something you didn't want to happen, but it's the result of positive reinforcement. How about buckling your seatbelt in the car? When you buckle your seatbelt, you perform behavior, and as a result, that annoying buzzer stops buzzing. Well, what's happened? Have you been reinforced for your behavior? Yes, you've been reinforced. Was something given to you? No, in fact, something was taken away. An adversive stimulus was taken away, that buzzing noise. You've been negatively reinforced, which encourages the behavior. All right, one more visual uh, example. Again, let's say that you have some behavior you want to reinforce, and uh, if they clean their room, then they get to get an ice cream sundae. And so that cleaning of the room behavior is reinforced, and that's a positive reinforcement. Or if they uh, score good grade on their test and they get excused from chores, that's negative reinforcement. We're getting rid of a rid of a state. Okay, now let's look at punishment. Positive punishment versus negative punishment. You can say, well, how can punishment be positive? Again, don't equate positive with good and negative with bad. Think positive as addition and negative as subtraction. So positive punishment is when something is given, positive, added, that's adversive, something you don't want. Maybe you're given extra chores to do. Uh, and do this should decrease the occurrence of the behavior because it's a punishment. So something's given that should decrease the occurrence. So you're given um, a penalty or a punishment, more chores to do. Negative punishment is when something is taken away, but in taking it away, it should decrease the occurrence of the behavior. So what's something you could lose after doing a behavior? Maybe you lose uh, TV time. You don't get video games for the week. That's negative punishment. If you misbehave, you lose your video games. It's negative punishment. Positive punishment, negative punishment. Both should decrease the occurrence of behavior. Something given, something taken away. Let's look at uh, these pictures we have here. So here are examples of positive punishment. So this little boy has misbehaved, and as a result, he's receiving a spanking. That's positive punishment. He doesn't think it's positive, but it's positive. He's being given something. And these little girls, maybe they misbehaved, and as a result, they have to go rake the leaves in the yard. They're given chores to do. Or maybe we have misbehaved, or we've engaged in a behavior we would like to suppress, and so the punishment is no TV for a week. That's negative punishment. Right, or removal punishment as this graphic is showing. So here's a graphic that I found that kind of summarizes the four types of, of consequences to behavior. So you have some behavior and you could get something you want as a result of doing that behavior, positive reinforcement. 
you could get rid of or escape or avoid something you don't want. That's a good thing. That's negative reinforcement. I'll do this behavior more if that happens. What if I do this behavior and I get something I don't want? Punishment, positive punishment, P+, plus, then I'll probably do that behavior less. Or I could lose something that I want, like TV time or time with my friends, and that would be negative punishment or P-. minus. That should decrease my behavior. In the next video, we're going to look at how Skinner studied this process of reinforcement and behavior uh, with the Skinner box. We're going to look at schedules of reinforcement, and uh, we're going to look at and we're going to look at the timing of reinforcement and punishment. Uh, we said the schedules of reinforcement and how we go through studying it, the effectiveness of punishment, and in the next video, we'll also look at applications of operant conditioning. So come back for that one.